How long have I known you, Shane? Oh, a while, I think. 20 years, maybe? 20 years, maybe? You know me when I was little and I got varsity, I think so. Yeah, when you're part of participating in the youth and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you're a youth leader. Yeah. 20, maybe 20 years. Okay. I just, I need you to move the mic stand because. You want me to use it? Yeah, I'll, I'll adjust it. I'll do this. How about that, Sean? Sure. And then I can just pass it to you. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Welcome to our Father's Day celebration. And I'm looking over at the men's table, our mighty men. We love you so much. And we are honoring you today and celebrating you. You guys are just incredible what you've done for your families, the communities. The list goes on. We appreciate you so much. And uh, just know how much we love you. And today is all about you. And um, so enjoy your morning. And I'm also just delighted to introduce Shane, who is our men's ministry leader in the church. And uh, I mean, his list goes on all the things that he's done throughout the church, and he is just wonderful. Also, fun fact, he is Pastor Cooper's father-in-law, and his wife, Pastor Sandy. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, here is Shane. Thank all right. you for coming. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. Awesome. So, after I'm done speaking for a bit, uh, we're going to be going for about three hours. Four? Four hours. Um, and then after this, Brendan is going to be singing a couple of songs, but just for the ladies, just so you know, Brendan is off the list. You cannot date Brendan anymore. He is off the market. So if you're thinking a little bit about that, no go zone. All right, so this morning we just wanted to honor the men, the fathers, and... I've known these guys forever, forever, maybe a couple minutes. So I just want to recognize Tom, Byan, Dave, Harold, John, Don, Peter, and Rod, who has the nicest hair here, the nicest hair. Yeah. And, uh, I feel like I fit in with my hair right now. I'm, I'm actually 30. I'm actually 30. So, just so you know, I, I married old. All right, so uh, we just want to talk a little bit about uh, one of my favorite topics, and that, of course, is talking about Jesus Christ. And there's one little verse that kind of sticks out at me, and that is Matthew 6, chapter 6, verse 6 where Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he's saying, basically, when you go into your closet, when you go into your secret place and pray, do it so that you're not doing it in public, like you're not trying to impress anyone. But if you're doing it in secret, your heavenly Father will reward you openly, openly. So this is what I want to talk about a little bit, the relationship that Jesus Christ had with his father was very intimate, very intimate. And he would share with his disciples some of his most intimate things that he saw his father do. And what's interesting, when you think about one of our, our foundations as a Christian is the resurrection. There is nothing greater than the resurrection. That is our foundation for Christianity. Like, if we don't have the resurrection, we don't have anything. And on one of Jesus' last meals, he basically was telling his disciples that he was going to die. 
on the cross. And they were like all sad. They were all sad. But when Judas Iscariot got up and left the table and the, and the devil entered him, he left the room. And then I just pictured Jesus snuggling up with his disciples and saying, look, now that basically he's gone, I could share something with you guys. Like, I'm going away, but I wanted to share something from my father. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you this. So I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And Paul the Apostle got a, uh, a revelation of this. He reveals this mystery to us about the resurrection, saying that basically when we die, we get a new heavenly body. That's our promise. We get to live with our Father for all of eternity, for all eternity. So Paul describes that in 1 Corinthians 15, and some people say, well, there is no resurrection. That's what Paul was dealing with in 1 Corinthians 15. People are saying there is no resurrection. And Paul said, if Jesus Christ did not die and rose again from the dead, then there is no resurrection. But if he did, you now have a resurrection. So Jesus or Paul is basically comforting us with those words that Jesus Christ shared with Paul intimately. And it all began back around the table where they're communing, kind of like what you guys are doing, saying, look, my father has plans. And it was designed before the foundation of the world that we would be in Christ for all eternity. Like what we're experiencing right now is just, it's fleeting. It's just in a moment of time. But we have eternity with Jesus Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ forever. We have seats in heavenly places. So two things that were promised. That Jesus is coming back one day. And another thing is we don't know when we're going to pass. We don't know. We have no idea. I could pass away tomorrow. But I know this. I will be with Christ. When I'm absent from this body, I will be with Christ instantaneously with him, with our Father for all eternity. Amen. All eternity. Amen. That's all I have to share. So, Brendan, I can go on all day. I can go on all day. But, Brendan, if you want to if you want to come and share a couple of songs. Pardon me? And Michaela. Awesome. Awesome. You're playing and singing. Okay. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that brief message because, again, if Jesus Christ didn't come to earth, his Father sent him to earth so that we can have communion with the Father. And it's very similar to what we're doing here. We're all fellowshipping. We're all getting to know each other. And I would encourage you after today to maybe reach out to your, your children, let them know you love them, that kind of thing, because life is fleeting, really, at the end of the day. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're on, sir. Yeah. First of all, I think it was a serious problem for us. This is supposed to be a senior suit, but I don't think anyone at these two tables is that they are 45. You're one of the smart guys. Oh, yeah, King James.